Feast day of St. John the Baptist. I wish everybody here could have been at Vera Beach yesterday. I spoke at the Republican pro-life uh, party, the big luncheon over there. And you should have seen some of the people's faces there with some of the things that I said. I mean, it was, they're having lunch, they dropped the fork a few times, but they needed to hear that. St. John the Baptist is my favorite saint because he's old. And it's funny, when I first started this church with Father Gary here, when I first came in here three years, three months, and three days ago, as soon as I met uh, Pierre, from the first day, he called me Willie the Baptist. So I said, okay. And I've been called John the Baptist ever since I was a little kid. And it's humbling. It really is. Because understand his boldness and also trying to be humble at the same time. So it's a difficult thing that I have fought my entire life. You have to be bold, especially when you're a pro-life Catholic activist. You have to be bold. The stuff that I've done in front of abortionists, in front of politicians, with President Trump, with DeSantis, etc., it takes boldness. But at the same time, you gotta have that humility that Father Gary was talking about. How do you divide that and how do you split that? Being bold at the same time, being humble. Come deep down, I'm as humble as they come. Most people are here thinking, well, this guy's really outspoken. He's really not humble. I'm very humble, but at the same time, I gotta stick to my guns and you gotta speak the truth. That's what I did yesterday at Vera Beach. And those people are saying, wow. Now there was a few ladies that were from St. Helen at the Vera Beach yesterday. And I spoke about Father Frank, who has been here many a times. His mom just passed away two Saturdays ago. He's gonna be the new priest up there at St. Helen. And I told these ladies about Father Frank. I said, when the priests come to your parish for the first time, come July 1st, all the changes are gonna be made. So when Father Frank was up to St. Helen, I said, get a group of three or four people, speak to Father Frank and say, hey, we're all about pro-life. Do your homilies, we got your back. Do not be afraid. And that's very important. I've done that my entire life. Every time we had a new priest come to St. Ignatius, I always asked for 30 minutes of meeting. And just to let them know what we do here and that we're gonna have it back. Please don't be afraid to talk about abortion from the pulpit. St. John the Baptist. This is funny. I, we just got back about six weeks ago from the, uh, our pilgrimage in the, at the Holy Land. About a week before, I was in confession with Father Gary. It was only four minutes, one sin. <laughs> and it was my sin. But no, on a serious note, Father Gary said, Willie, I want you to pick one apostle. And we go to the Holy Land walk in his footsteps for the 11 days. And I thought about it, and I thought about all 12. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go with St. John the Baptist, because that was my favorite saint. When I was at the Holy Land four years ago, one of my highlights was going to the Jordan River and being baptized right there at that river. It was amazing, life-changing. So, you know, typical Willie G, instead of putting my name Willie on it, I turned around and put St. John the Baptist. Now you should have seen some of the people from Africa and from Canada, from Mexico. They're like, wow, did you see that guy, St. John the Baptist? So it was pretty funny. But just, just to cut to it, this is really, I mean, this is an amazing thing because four days into our trip when we went to see a Galilee, right there at the shores of Galilee, 16 feet away from the water, we had the most beautiful mass in the world with our altar service there. And during the mass, I'm playing music with Jesus, Father Gary, out of the clue of blue, uh, comes up and he refers to me as Peter, the Apostle Peter. And it hit me on big time. I dropped my harmonicas and it was the most humbling experience. You talk about a holy moment. I, if you saw me, I was shaking. I was like crying. I was like, wow, you know, Father Gary, my all time favorite priest used to refer to me as Peter. That's a big responsibility. So I'm looking at this name tag going St. John the Baptist. Now he's calling me Peter. I'm thinking, okay, I was about to walk on the water right there. So I got a split personality the rest of the trip for seven days. I'm walking around with St. John the Baptist, but yet Father Gary's referring to me as Peter. So it was an amazing thing, it really was. And it was humbling. It was humbling, it was life changing. I mean, that was like, to me, like one of the biggest things in the world. So here we are today, June 24th, the feast day. What happened a year ago? Exactly a year ago today was the reversal of Roe v. Wade. I'll tell you right now, that happened at 10.10 a.m. last year. Here's the uh, paper. 
This is from last year when um, Roe v. Wade was overturned. So I still, I keep these papers. When it comes to pro-life, I keep these. Now today, fast forward a year, and you have a little smaller, it's down here, and it's all about, you know, the one year anniversary of Roe v. Wade, Palm Beach Post. I could honestly tell you, no, I'm not nervous, I just dropped my papers. Mary Ellen, thank you, by the way. Channel 5, 12, 25, 29, Palm Beach Post, New York Times, every single uh, media outlet called me last year at 10, 10 a.m. as soon as it was reversed. Willie, we want to interview you about this uh, reversal of Roe v. Wade. I said, you guys think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm going to drive to Channel 5, the studios up there, that neighborhood? I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here. If you want to come to my house, you come interview me. 12, 1, 2, 3, and 4. They all came to my house. Channel 5, 12, 25, Palm Beach Post. Did two Zoom meetings. All within five hours. And it was as strong as can be. My, my interviews were unreal, especially when they come to my house, because it's my territory. So they look around, they see all these crucifixes and all the rosaries and, you know, statues of uh, St. Francis of Sisi and everything. And the next day I get a call from a guy named Don, who I've been dealing with now for probably about a year and a half. He's a head security. His name is Tom. He's a head security for Planned Parenthood of the whole state of Florida. Willie, this is Tom from Planned Parenthood. You okay? I said, yeah. He goes, uh, you're the only one that has said anything about, um, you know, Roe v. Wade. Where are the Catholics at? Where did nobody said anything? It was like, where, why is everybody so quiet? It was like the New York Yankees won in the World Series 40 years ago. Reggie hit three homers. The next day, everybody stay in the house? No. I mean, you should have a ticket day parade. These Catholics and all these people, these pro-lifers, so-called pro-lifers, never said a word. Now, who was um, protesting and who was celebrating and who was doing any demonstrations that day? It was the other side, the liberals. They all had their rallies. And I'm sitting there watching all this stuff. They took our victory after 50 years of us praying at these abortion clinics and fighting this. They took our victory, turned us upside down, and started now calling us extremists. Look at these people, these pro-lifers. They're totally out of it. And it continues today because we have allowed it. How many priests do you think said a word about Roe v. Wade a year ago during their Saturday and Sunday homily? I could have five, because you've been listening, James. He's a doctor. He knows my stuff, and he reads my emails. Five priests. I can mention them right now, but I won't. He's, he was the sixth one. Five other priests have even said a word about it. Did you read my email from two days ago? What did I challenge? Who did I challenge? I hope everybody here read. I challenge every priest in this diocese, 53 parishes, to talk about Roe v. Wade Saturday or Sunday this weekend. And I even said, if anybody has a priest or a pastor, just you know, videotape their uh, talk, their homily, send it to me. I'll put out an email. I challenge every priest. Only two priests got back to me. And that's it. I won't say their name. But that's what's going on today. I walked into this church three years, three months, and three days ago. And when I first met Father Gary, I said, wow, this is amazing. It's like Pentecost Sunday. In here. But there was six people in here. There's more people sleeping at Michelle Pierce's house than there was in his church. Kids. And I'm thinking, wow, this guy's on fire. This is like, I come back the next uh, Sunday, 930, there's eight people here. And that's how we got to talking. Most of you guys know the story. I won't repeat it. But this church is the pro-life church. And that's why a lot of these other parishes like saying, man, that, you know, Willie's Maronite Church. It's not Willie's Maronite Church. They don't even know what it is. But it's what Father Gary has established here in all our pro-lifers. So we have to continue walking the walk and not talking the talk. Very important. I mean, to me, pro-life is the most important thing. And just to allow what's going on here with the left. What did Planned Parenthood do last year? Any, anybody have any idea how many abortions were committed by Planned Parenthood last year? 375,000. How many in the state of Florida? All total, 82,192. Palm Beach County, 6,200 abortions. Those numbers, that 82,000 is probably gonna go up to 100,000. We're number three, number three in the country. Nothing to brag about. California, New York, Florida. Three in the country. And our governors go cost us free Florida. We're not free Florida when we're killing babies 
every day. 225 babies are killed in the state of Florida every day. 225. Think about that. Let's go back to St. John the Baptist and our pilgrimage. When you see, the, when you hear about or read about the visitation and Mary going to Elizabeth and John the Baptist, six months pregnant, he was, you know, already six months, and for him leaping for joy, he realized that his cousin Jesus was already a baby. He realized that he was a human being, he wasn't a blob of cells, and that's why he leaped for joy. To me, the reason why I love uh, St. John the Baptist, he's the original pro-lifer, the original pro-lifer, and he was also radical, he was a, a rebel. Think about what he did with this ministry. Think about how he fought the government, King Herod and everything. I mean, that's why when I look and read all this stuff on, on uh, you know, St. John the Baptist, I said, wow, you know, I didn't know that I had that much in common with him. And we all have to have that Baptist in us. We really do. You know, so many people out here, like yesterday, this is a well, perfect example. Last year when I spoke at the Vero Beach, 10 people came up to me afterwards. Wow, Willie, you know, how can we get a hold of you? I gave up my Christian on the mission fence. I said, there's my phone number, there's my email. One person sends me an email the next day. It was like the second coming of St. John Paul II. I said, wow, who is this guy? I just, you know, found another pro-lifer that I'm going to add to my pro-lifers for Trump. I thought this guy was amazing. So I read everything. I, re I responded. I said, the next couple of events are coming up. We we're having the uh, protest at Planned Parenthood of Florida Mango on the feast day of St. Joseph, March 19th. And I invite him, etc. I have not heard another word from this gentleman. Haven't heard another word. So in other words, these people get so fired up when we speak. Just like the men's uh, rally, we, we, you know, I ran that for 14 years with uh, Jim Manhart, who's from St. Helen. Those men, 1,500 men, are inside this cathedral, standing room only. Jesse Romero was speaking, Scott Hahn, we had everybody there. Those men leave that church. I mean, they're walking on air. They get to their car, they get to the buses, they go back to the parishes and said, you should have seen that, that uh, incredible rally we just went to. Jesse Romero was incredible. The music, the harmonica play was unreal. Just kidding. But it's amazing how they told their spouses that day. Gene will tell you because he's been to a bunch of the men's rallies. And then they go to church the next Sunday and said, Father, you should have seen this rally. It was unbelievable. We had all these confessions. I was in charge of all the priests. So I would bring in 40 priests. We would start confession at 7 in the morning. Everybody on fire. Now they go back to work on Monday. You know, hey, Tony, what was the guest speaker's name again? Uh, Jimmy? Was it Jesse? I had no idea. Within 24 hours, we forget what we did, what we experienced. And yet they write me these emails. It's like, wow, look at this guy. This guy's on fire. And then when you challenge somebody, they just get intimidated. That's what we really need to stand up. Priests, when I talk to them, they said, Willie, and I've talked to Bishop Barbarito many a time. Every time we have a meeting with Father Brian King, Bishop Barbarito, and myself, I said, Willie, before we sit down, remember 50% of Catholics are Democrat, 50% are Republican. I said, okay, so you're already throwing in the top. I said, we're going to change that 50-50 to 60-40, 70-30. So it said, every time a priest mentions the word abortion in the Catholic Church, some people are going to you know, get a little rattled. One out of four women in this country have had an abortion. Think about that. I said, well, can we speak to the priests? And I offered to speak to every priest in this diocese six years ago. I was going to rent out the spiritual center over there at North Palm Beach, invite all 53 pastors and all the priests. I said, let me speak to these priests and pastors. This is what we need to hear. And they refused to do it. They refused to do that. And to me, it just, it killed me. Father Gary, you never talk about abortion in your homilies. Can we talk about the Ten Commandments? This is how you bring it up to your congregation. All right, let's talk about the Ten Commandments. When was the last time you heard a homily about the Ten Commandments? Nobody raised their hands. When was the last time you heard about going to hell? Nobody raised their hands. Talk about the Ten Commandments, and when you get to number five, you stop and say, wow, thou shalt not kill. Okay, well, let's now talk about conception. Let's talk about human life. And that's how you get these priests, when you meet with them, like when Father Frank is going up to St. Helen, talk to them. Talk about the Ten Commandments, and they hit number five. 
Priests have come up and said, Willie, we have confession on Saturdays at 3 o'clock. 17-year-old girl comes in and says, Father, I have to confess a sin. I had an abortion six months ago. 17 years old. So now that young girl is going to Mass at 9.30 in the morning, and that same priest is presiding. And now the priest is speaking just like me, and he says that abortion is murder. Think about it. That girl's sitting right there, and just like Cecilia. And all of a sudden, this girl's like, wow, hold on a second. I just confessed to this priest 19 hours ago. Now he's telling me that I killed a baby, that abortion, abortion is murder. That's why so many of her priests are afraid to speak about it. Annette Russell, who was the secretary for the bishop, Willie, 50% of the congregation will get up and, and just walk out if a priest talks about abortion. Who's ever been to St. Ignatius? We've got all those big giant doors. We've got 12 ushers. I said, get them up and usher them out of there. Just get them out of the parking lot as soon as possible. We don't need 70 million Catholics in this country. I'd rather go down to 35 million like Pope Benedict XVI. Just give me real true Catholics. In this church right now, there's 88 people in here right now. If all 88 are true pro-life Catholics, that's great. But if half of them are like, you know what, this guy's a little too strong, just go out the doors. Seriously, we need to stand up right now. What happened with the Roe v. Wade, again, with the, with the priest, and what happened with the liberals? Okay, this is uh, probably the thing that killed me the most. The 2022 election was lost. Why? because the Republican Party did not have the same message. And you, if you heard, you know, DeSantis, I've been on DeSantis for four years and four months, he finally signed the six-week abortion ban, which probably won't take effect for another year. Uh, Lindsey Graham talking about the 15-week. Uh, Tim Scott's talking 21. Every candidate had a different story. They didn't have the same message. Trump even comes in, and I started pro-life with Trump in 2016, and even he's saying, you know, the Santa six-week ban is too harsh. This is coming from the most pro-life president we've ever had in 247 years come July 4th. That kills me. I represent President Trump. So the left and the liberals came out here and said, we're going to take this thing and we're just going to have one message. Abortion 24-7 at all times at all costs. That was their message. Our message should have been, we want, we reverse Roe v. Wade, abortion is murder, period. If every candidate would have come out there just with a giant, just a, a tidal wave and said, this is what we need to do, abortion is murder, period. Don't, don't give me the six week and, or 12 week or 15 week. Abortion is murder. It's a human being. And St. John the Baptist said that 2,000 years ago. Very important. I've been in Mar-a-Lago with President Trump many a times. We can talk politics here. If I was talking about this as St. Ignatius, half of the people would have walked out. And Bishop Barbarino would have come running across the street from his office. Willie, really, what are you doing? Sit down, sir. Let me, let me finish. <laughs> this is real important. Okay? Now we're going to get thrown out of one minute. <laughs> That's a technical foul. I want to pray. Huh? I want you to pray. Okay, well, hold on. Let me, let me just uh, finish up here real quick. The, the last thing, this is real important. When I was at mar a lago six months ago, President Trump invited 11 people. They were all big sponsors, big boosters. They had a lot of money. Thank you. I don't even need this anymore. I actually wrote a really beautiful uh, uh, bullet points and everything, but Nancy Pelosi ripped them in half behind me. <laughs> anyway. With the, 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 seriously, President Trump invited 11 people. Everybody paid $1,500 for this dinner. It was unbelievable. Myself, 11 other people, Boris Epstein, the attorney, sat next to me, Kimberly Guilfoyle, and another person from his staff. The place was decorated. It was like a wedding. All the flowers, everything. There was more waiters in there I've ever seen in my life, even at the Feast of Canaan. It was unbelievable. And we went around. We were there for three hours, and he was with us for two hours. We started at this table here at this corner. It was a, a husband and wife from Alabama. They spoke, introduced themselves, and every time somebody said the word abortion, he would stop and say, Willie, what's your take on it? Because she had mentioned a 15-week ban. So I got up, and I gave a little two or three-minute thing. It wasn't my turn to speak yet, but he called on me. We went to the next person. Every time somebody said Catholic or bishop, Willie, what's your take on it? 
Long story short, the last question he asked me, he says, Willie, what do you believe? Do you believe in the exceptions to abortion? Which is what? Rape, incest, the life of the mother, not the health of the mother. We need to put the life of the mother. Do you believe in those exceptions? I said, sir, I'm the president of Bombay County Right to Life League for 12 years. I, and I pointed at him, I said, I represent you and pro-lifers from Trump. There is no exceptions when it comes to abortion. You could have heard a finger. These people in here go, wow, where did where'd this guy come from? But they all got my pen and my business card and we're all in, in contact. So I told him, I said, there's no exception. And he says, well, some of us beg to differ. Now, I could have just bowed to him and said, yeah, President, you're 100% right, yeah. You know, no, I'm not going to give up my principles because abortion is murder, period. And I said, have you ever heard of Pam Stenzel? He says, no. I said, anybody ever heard of Pam Stenzel? I said, no. She's uh, close to my age. She's a very uh, prolific attorney, incredible pro-life. When her mom was 15 years old, she was raped and got pregnant. The mom decided to have the baby that was Pam. Fast forward, Pam was adopted by a mom, and that mom adopted seven other siblings. So Pam now has seven siblings, all adopted, two from rape and herself as well. And I mean, you could have heard a pin drop at mar a there. So again, you have to stick to your guns. You really, really do, and I appreciate what we do here in this church. I love Father Gary to death. Again, I got a split personality, St. John the Baptist and Peter, but I will not deny it, and I'll try to walk on water. But anyway, thank you for your time. You gotta have a sense of humor. Seriously, you, you gotta have a sense of humor when you talk about thank you. You gotta have a sense of humor when you speak about this, but at the same time, you have to be bold. And that's why I've been coming to this church for three years, three months, and three days. Hey, you can have a seat, I'll give you a hug later. But thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you, Father Gary, appreciate it. And uh, Jesus, thanks for the music. Love to play with you.